Explanations of the functions of sleep attempt to answer the question, why do we sleep and what is its purpose? Restoration theories focus on the physiological aspects of sleep, in other words, the pattern of neural and bodily activity which occurs while we are sleeping. The common ground for any restoration account is an assumption that sleep is for physiological repair. Restoration theorists have proposed a number of possible restorative outcomes of sleep, including that sleep may allow us to break down unwanted substances which accumulate in the body during daytime activity, that sleep may allow us to carry out some essential processes of chemical synthesis, which might be more efficient done at night when the body is still rather than when we are awake, and or that sleep may enable the recovery of neural components or pathways which may become fatigued when we're awake. Oswald, a restoration theorist, proposed that slow-wave sleep and REM sleep have specific and distinct functions. He argued that deep non-REM repairs the body, whereas REM sleep repairs the brain. Repairs during slow-wave sleep include cell and tissue renewal and muscle repair, the release of the growth hormone, the growth hormone is secreted in pulses through the day but surges during slow-wave sleep, and repair of the immune system. A lack of slow-wave sleep has been associated with decreased immune functioning, leaving people lacking sleep more vulnerable to illness. Repairs during REM sleep include brain growth. Evidence shows that infants spend more time in this sleep stage and they are certainly experiencing rapid neural development. Stimulation of neural protein synthesis and restoration of the balance of neurotransmitters, perhaps by providing a break in brain chemical release to allow sensitivity to be regained and reset. Restoration accounts have also highlighted a link between memory consolidation and sleep. It's been proposed that our brains might sift through the day's memories during REM sleep and hence, increase, hence the increase in brain activity and discard the unwanted memories for more efficient storage and processing. Horn, director of Loughborough's University Sleep Research Centre, has also been credited with proposing a restoration account of sleep. His ideas, however, have been frequently misreported. He's argued that some of a night's sleep is for brain restoration, and he made a distinction between core sleep for brain repair and optional sleep. He argued that body restoration occurs during waking and sleeping rest periods, and not uniquely in sleep. Horn argues that core sleep is the first few cycles of the sleep stages. And Horn himself said that he's not exactly sure what's being repaired here because it's difficult to work this out. And Horn's theory differs from strict restoration accounts, though, because he argued that the rest of a night's sleep is optional, satisfying purely a behavioural, adaptive, so evolved need to save energy. Horn also argued that the surge in the growth hormone seen in the early part of a night's sleep is likely to be to protect tissue protein during overnight fasting, so basically not eating because you're in bed asleep. So the growth hormone surge, according to Horn, is a consequence of sleep and not the purpose of sleep. In summary, we sleep to restore and repair. There are differing views about whether this is for the brain and the body or just the brain. It is clear, however, that research has demonstrated connections between numerous aspects of bodily and neural functioning and sleep.